Welcome to your Liquid Planner workspace. Let's take a look around. I'm here now in our workspace for fictional company Acme Inc. Your workspace is laid out in a series of seven primary tabs across the top. I'm sitting here now on the Projects tab. This is where you create your projects and schedule your work. In Liquid Planner, a project is represented as a blue folder. You can break your project down into phases, for instance, by using subfolders. That's the gray folder. And then, of course, you have the individual tasks for your project. At the top of your workspace, you have an inbox. The inbox is where you can place tasks before they're ready to be scheduled. Notice there's no schedule bar for this particular task. The next two containers are what we call packages. Now packages can serve different functions in your plan. A package can add organizational structure to your plan, or if you're scheduling multiple concurrent projects, a package is a very key piece of scheduling your work. Liquid Planner uses a unique priority-based scheduling methodology. Be sure to watch our video called Scheduling Concepts to learn more about that. In short, your work is scheduled in the order in which it sits here on the Projects tab. You can reorder your work via simple drag and drop. I can click on this project, drag it and drop it, sit it up above the other project. And since we're priority-based scheduling, that means now the brochure project is scheduled before the website project. Now within the Projects tab, there are different views. We're sitting here right now on the Timeline view. I could choose instead to look at any of these other views. I have a Baseline view if I'd like to compare a current plan to a past plan. We have a video dedicated to using the Baseline feature. We also have some other pre-built reporting views here that you might like to look at. Let's stay right on this row and move to the right. After the view picker, we have three primary menus. I have an add menu for adding work into the plan, an edit menu for editing existing work, and then I have a share menu for using features like email integration, PDF printouts, or plan exports. To the right of the menus, I have a series of filtering tools. Best practice in Liquid Planner to always keep your plan filtered to just what is most relevant to you at any particular point in time. Dropping to the next row here on the far left I have an icon where I can collapse my plan. Then the expand icon brings everything back into view. Moving to the right on this row, if I click on this gear icon, I'm able to hide or expose various columns here in my plan. Moving to the far right above the schedule bars, I have the scale. If I click here, I can change the scale for my schedule bars. Or I can go ahead and click up here to reset the anchor date for my schedule bars. Now let's look at a schedule bar. You'll notice our bars have two different shaded areas. The blue area represents work that is still left to be done, remaining work. The gray area represents work that has already been done, that's time tracked. So you'll hear us refer to the gray area of the schedule bar as the tracking bar. Now I'll also point out that we have a right-click menu. So if you're a fan of right-click menus, you can get access to a lot of the functions we've talked about already here via the right-click menu. So the last thing I want to point out here on the Projects tab is that you can double-click on any task, and when you do, the Edit panel for that task will open over to the right. This Edit panel is a scrollable edit panel. It's how you're going to make any edits to the particular plan item. So let's see what's in here. I have a checklist section. This is where I can break this task down into the individual steps necessary to complete the task. I have a comment section where I can add or view comments. There's a notes section where I can add rich text notes. There's a document section where I can attach documents that might be local documents or if you're a box user, links to documents out on your box directory. And then in the more area, I can add or edit dependencies and view the history for this task. That's like an audit trail for this task. I can resize this edit panel, grab the divider, drag left or right. I could click the printer in the upper right to turn it into a full page edit panel. Use this arrow to return back to the original format. And then I can close the edit panel by clicking the X in the upper right or clicking escape on my keyboard. So that's the Projects tab. Let's go ahead now and look at the My Work tab. The My Work tab allows you to focus on just the tasks that are assigned to you. You can very quickly identify them and update them here. So when I first come here, I'm on the Active Tasks view, and here's the list of all of the tasks that I own. They're listed in start date order. And then to the right, I have the Edit Panel. That's that same Edit Panel we were just looking at on the Projects tab. 
Now if I look at the left margin here, I have some other views available to me. If I click on the clock, I'm looking at my timesheet. If I click on the comment icon, I'm looking at comments that I have added or comments that were entered for me. If I click on the calendar, here's my tasks for the current month. I can sync this particular set of tasks to my external calendaring tool. Next down the left margin, I have a personal status report. And then finally, of course, I have an add menu for adding items when I'm working here on the My Work tab. Now we have a video dedicated to working in the My Work tab. It'll give you more detail. It's called Daily Task Management. So let's look next at the Home tab. This is pretty much your dashboard in Liquid Planner. The top section gives you some stats about your work in the plan, and then the rest of the page is dedicated to the workspace comment stream. So you can attach a comment to any plan item in Liquid Planner, and then all comments across the entire workspace will aggregate here on the home page. They are grouped by plan item. And we talk more about using commenting in Liquid Planner in a few other of our Getting Started videos. So let's look now at the People tab. The People tab will show you all of your workspace members, whether they are real members, virtual members, or portal guests. It's also where you can come to add new members into your workspace. And if you are going to use our access control or portal features, that's where you can get access to those settings as well. So next, let's look at the Analytics tab. Now this tab is only visible to workspace members with manager, owner, or co-owner status. This is where you can create custom reports. You can create some baseline comparison reports or some roll-up reports across various plan dimensions. We also have a video dedicated to using the Analytics Report Builder. So next, we'll look at the Settings tab. This is where we've consolidated all of the workspace administration and management functions in Liquid Planner. Again, if any of these functions aren't available to you, they'll be faded out. You also get some nice high-level workspace details over here to the right. So the final tab we look at is the Help tab, and as you would suspect, this is quick access to all of the various help resources available to you. We have an online help guide and training videos. We have user forums. We also do weekly live training webinars. We have a blog which is really nice for looking at special topics about Liquid Planner. And if you're a developer, you might be interested in reading here about our API and webhooks. So we've looked at all of the primary tabs across the top now. Let me go to the far right here and point out that you have an avatar menu. If I click right next to, the, to my avatar, I'll take you to my settings page. This is your personal profile. Check everything for accuracy, but I'm going to call special attention to your availability setting. Liquid Planner is doing automatic resource leveling, which is great. It means you can't overbook a person in Liquid Planner, but it does mean for your schedule to be accurate, you need to be telling Liquid Planner exactly how many hours per day you have available for the project work. We start you out with eight hours a day, Monday through Friday, but scale that down if you have overhead work that's not related to the projects. Now back to my avatar menu for one last thing, I want to point out your notification settings page. You can choose to receive email notifications in Liquid Planner. The recent change notification will send you an email when other people make edits to tasks, tasks that you own or follow. You get to select the frequency for those notifications, and you get to select which particular types of edits you'd like to be notified about. So that's a quick tour through your Liquid Planner workspace. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions along the way, and don't forget to watch the rest of our Getting Started videos.